Hey Glamour, welcome to my home. Hi, my name is Chelsea Coffey. I am a 32-year-old copywriter, recent author, and blogger from thecoffeebreak.com living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I make $50,000 a year, I have 12K in loans, and 10K in savings. My apartment is 1,300 square feet. It's two bedrooms, two and a half baths. I live here with my fiance. We pay $2,000 a month in rent, 150 in utilities, and we split everything. My fiance, his name is Warren, and he is a professional soccer player. That's why we live here in Philly. And he also has a lifestyle brand called Creval, which is his last name, our feature last name. And it's a lifestyle brand that includes apparel, photography, events. The thing I love most about our place is the light. We have a lot of plants and it gets pretty cold here and the winters are really long, so the more light, the better. It just really brightens up the space and makes it feel really warm and welcoming. All right, this is my kitchen. My fiance is a photographer, so a lot of the imagery that we have in the house is stuff that he shot or things that I painted myself. I think one of the biggest things about creating a space and wanting to design it is wanting to do it affordably. So if you feel like you're talented enough, go for it, put your own stuff up. These are from this really great vintage store here in Philly called Jinx. A lot of our stuff in the apartment actually is from there. We try to support local businesses whenever we can. Disclaimer, the light bulbs are from Target though. Here we have our spices. When I moved up here, Warren kept them up high, so it just naturally got put there even though I can't reach like half the stuff. We keep sugar in this whiskey bottle. I know it's kind of corny, but I thought the bottle was really pretty, so I said I don't want to get rid of it. Let's keep it. This one is our liquor cabinet. Warren wanted to have like a proper bar, and I was like, this is not a bachelor pad. We're going to put them up in a cabinet. We're getting married this year, so we cook a lot. We are really trying to commit to making sure that we stay on top of our finances. So we cook as much as we can. If we're out running errands and it's running late, we'll run through a drive-through and try to grab food. We'll try to have a date night at least twice a month. But other than that, we're in this kitchen making dinner. Warren is a great cook. And the funny thing is, I kind of misunderstood him cooking so much as he loved to cook, so I kind of let him take the lead on that. He's like, no, Charles, like we just have to eat. So I really tried to like take it up a notch and cook more and be more of a team player in that way. It's just, if it takes longer than 30 minutes, I'm checking out. I've always heard that weddings can be really expensive, but I feel like there's just no way to know how expensive they actually are without planning one yourself. Warren and I aren't flashy. There's nothing cute to us about being like, oh my gosh, we actually want $20,000 over budget. Like that's really not the goal for us because we have businesses and we work for ourselves. It's really important to make sure that we're using the money how we want to. It definitely has been a big change in terms of lifestyle. Like a lot of the things that we would have wanted to do that we wouldn't have had to think so much about, we have to be really conservative about now. This is our living room. We have a few different things that we've set up here in the space. A few of them are especially sentimental for me. Here I have a fertility doll. I actually stole it from my mom's house. She has them all over the place and I've always liked them so much. So I was like, she won't notice if one is missing. This thinking guy is just a reminder to stay locked in, stay focused, stay on task. I think it's something that I have to work really hard at because there's so many distractions and so many things pulling me in different directions. He's my reminder to stick with it. And then here, this is like one of my favorite things in the house. There are these little photo books that I made for Warren and I's like one year anniversary. So it was just kind of a way to commemorate our time together and highlight the special year that we had. Here we have the household Nintendo, which I say that like in a tongue in cheek kind of way because I do not play video games, but on the rare occasion that there's a group of friends over, I'll know that they're playing because the whole house is like erupting and a roar of like fighting and yelling. Here we have Warren's, I call it like his trophy soccer ball collection. Each ball has a significant reason for being here and I wish I could tell you exactly what those reasons were, but you know, sometimes you just walk in and say, Hey, if you want the balls out, we can put the balls out. I'm not sure why this one is deflated, but I do think that it's really cool that he's found ways in kind of a subtle way to add, you know, part of a really big part of his life into our design. And then here we have a polia plant, which was like one of my coveted plants. Like I wanted one for so long and then Trader Joe's started selling them for like $8. 
If you guys noticed, there are a million different pots in here. We definitely tried to find ways to mix it up. Something that I started to run into is I looked around and I felt like all I saw was terracotta. So I went from painting the pots myself to finding cool ones. Now, the one in the corner, the yellow one, is actually something that we've had for a long time. And yellow is like kind of a subtle theme throughout our house. So we find different ways just to kind of break up winter. When it's like gray and dark in here, it's a little too much for me. So yellow is like a bright, sunny, happy color. So that's really helped a lot. This coffee table is something that Warren has had forever. I don't know how many dinners sitting here at this coffee table watching TV. I know, don't judge us. A typical Friday night for us is normally one of two things. We're either making dinner at home, we most likely will have some show on, or even we're house hunting right now. So it's not fun, but a lot of our nights have turned into meetings or work sessions, just trying to see if we can find a house that we like, if the numbers make sense. If we had a living room, this little nook right here would probably be it. I've lived here in this apartment in Philly for the last year and three months. Before that, I was living in Bedside, Brooklyn. My apartment in Bed-Stuy was like a room at the front, a room at the back, and then there is this long, narrow space in the middle, and it was like, what are we gonna do with this space? How are we gonna make it interesting? Warren came across this piece of wood, and he got it, and he's like, Chelsea, I'm thinking about making it a shelf, and I was like, really? He and his grandpa actually like came over to my apartment. They had a heck of a time trying to get it into that brick wall, but it's just such a great memory for me, so I would love to always have this in our spaces wherever we end up. The chair is another purchase from Jinx. This pillow is from Target. My favorite design moments are the ones that happen by accident. We were setting up the space and I think it was the first time we had to water plants. And I remember Warren, like he put just like a random nail and I stepped back and I was like, bang. And I was really pumped. I was like, let's do it straight through. So we ended up having this one. We put up that one, we put up that one. This has been a great way to kind of create like a watered down urban jungle in our house. The hanging planters that we have here are macrame and I made those myself. I think ivies are just really easy to take care of. Another good thing about this is it's not always the easiest to get to them, to water them. I obviously have to use a ladder. So I love that they are pretty hardy and they will do okay if you skip them every now and then for watering. We get asked a lot how long it takes to water our plants. This might be surprising, but it only takes about an hour to hour and a half, and it kind of depends on the time of year. So in the summer, we're watering plants all the time, and in the winter time, it's once a week. This is our office space. I spend most of my time in the apartment at my desk. I work from home, and when Warren's not training, he's working from home too. I intentionally wanted to create a space where I could work that felt like a proper workspace. This wall was gray when we moved in and we decided to keep it. It's a great way to kind of signify that this is a different space from the rest of the house. This space he put together on his own and my space I put together on my own as well. It's cool because we've been able to keep our personalities but in a way that feels congruent. The picture at the bottom was a picture that my mom had in our kitchen. Warren and I are both entrepreneurs and I always pretend that like they have their little business going. In my mind, that's me and Warren. Like we both have our own thing, but we're working together and we're making it happen. This is our guest bedroom. We obviously wanted to have a space for our guests when they come visit us. And we also do Airbnb. Here we have full length mirror. Whenever I stay at someone's house and there isn't a full length mirror, I'm like, how am I gonna look at my outfit? It drives me crazy. So we've tried to make a point to have mirrors throughout the house so people can always get a good look of what they have on and feel good going out the door. The nightstand that we have here is one of my favorite pieces. It was when I finally got a job and got my own place. I was so excited to decorate it because I'd just been on a budget for like so long. For my 30th birthday, I wanted to have a 70s glam birthday party. And my event planner, who also is our wedding planner, she went all out and I just was so excited because she actually took these fans that she got from Ikea. She spray painted them gold. And it's just one of my favorite things. It's a great alternative for a headboard and it saves you a lot of money when you have a bed that's just the actual mount at the bottom. People always ask if it's weird having Airbnb guests stay with us because they're physically in the house while we're here. So when you know that you're gonna have strangers in your home who a lot of times end up being friends by the time that they leave, you just do things differently. You don't leave your valuables out. You don't have them in obvious places. On average, it's around $200 a weekend for guests. If we have guests just two weekends out of the month, we've taken care of all the groceries for the month. 
Welcome to our room. Here we have our bed. We originally had a black bed and then we wanted to bring in something that was a little softer in terms of color. So we went for some natural wood bed from Ikea. Our pillows are from Target. We have these two signs that I made, inhale, exhale. I feel like my brain's always going like a million miles per hour, even if I'm like kind of chill. So I think it's really important for me just to prioritize that and remind myself that like sometimes it's okay just to step away and take a breath. Here we have our photo gallery wall, and it was really important to us to create a space that felt personal but still kind of brought in elements of photography and art. Here we have our backup desk space. Warren really wanted a go-to just in case we had like guests over or we needed to make an important call. Before we had like a clothing rack here that I really loved here and I was like, I want it to still be there. And he's like, Chelsea, you need another space. So, Gave in my camera, one of Warren's cameras, and this is actually my book. So I spent a year writing it. It's a book of affirmations. It's called Speak Those Things, 52 Affirmations to Build a Life You Love. If I had known that it can be that easy to publish a book, like I would have done it a long time ago. I think I was just intimidated a little bit by the process. This is kind of our knickknack table. The Etch-A-Sketch, I'm just a sucker for anything small. When I saw this Etch-A-Sketch, I was like, oh my gosh, do they even make them that size? <laughs> and it was just like a, something I couldn't pass on, so I thought that was so cute. And then we have giant playing cards, which ironically we've never used. It's just they had cactus on it, and I thought that that was so cute. So I grabbed it. This is one of my favorite vintage pieces. It's from a Houston-based vintage shop called Top Vintage. They have an amazing selection and they donated a lot of stuff on more than one occasion to my nonprofit Mia's Closet. Shout out to them for not only being good people, but having great prices. I've had a lot of different seasons financially. So there have been times where I've had a lot of money in the bank. There's been times where I felt like I had no money in the bank. There have been times where I felt really secure and really steady. Um, right now, I call it rebuilding. I'm not a financial advisor, but if there is one recommendation that I would make for somebody who has credit card debt, it's to consider getting a loan. About six months ago, I reached out to a credit union and I said, I have these credit cards, like I wanna get them all on one payment and I wanna have one interest rate, one fee, like I just like, I need a fresh start with this. And it literally has like radically changed like my financial experience. All right, Glamour, thank you so much for being here. It was great to have you guys, but unfortunately it's time to say goodbye. Hope to see you next time. Take care. And what would next time be, you know? The next time you guys come back. Next time <laughs>